Web developers, watch out because now you can build even better React Native apps with your favorite CSS framework, Tailwind. What's up React Native friends, Simon here from galaxies.dev. For quite some time, React Native developers have used a library called NativeWind to bring Tailwind to React Native. And this library, NativeWind, just hit version 4, actually already 4.1, coming with major improvements and making it one of the best and easiest ways to style your React Native apps right now. This means you get things like platform selectors, media and container queries, pseudo classes, CSS variables or animations and transitions. Transitions. If you're a web developer, Native Wind will make your transition to React Native a whole lot easier. And if you're already a React Native dev, you will love the additional value that Native Wind gives you over the built in Stylesheet API. In this video, we'll look closer at what Native Wind is and how you can use it and why it might be nothing less than the future of React Native styling. Oh, and if you're looking to learn React Native, check out galaxies.dev. It's my way of helping you learn React Native without wasting your time on outdated material, including personal onboarding and coachings so you reach your goals faster. Try galaxies.dev for free and now let's dive into native wind. Before we dive into some code, let's check out quickly what native wind actually is. Basically, it allows you to use Tailwind CSS in your React Native application. It has a bunch of key features and it's also interesting to mention that there are some golds and some non gold So this is meant to be a utility framework uh, that supports all React Native platforms. And you know, React Native can run on actually quite many platforms. However, it is not meant as a complete compatibility with all libraries. So if we have reanimated Moti or other libraries from React Native, they might actually work with Native Wind, but it's not something they strive for. Uh, it is really meant to just work and bring you the best possible native experience on the native platforms. That also means it's not really a UI component library like you're used to from maybe React Native Paper or other like Tamagui, but it is really just like aligning with Tailwind CSS and bringing those features to React Native in an easy to use way. There's a lot to unpack in both the announcement for version 4.1, which is the latest version, but also in the version 4 announcement that has like the most of the basic fundamental updates, CSS variables, and we're gonna take a look at a few of these things in code. Just for your information, if you wanna get started, of course, I highly recommend you use Expo. You can use it without Expo, but you really won't use the, wouldn't do this if you're coming from the web. Um, and you can install native wind. I followed exactly these guides. You don't need uh, this because this is only for non-expo projects. You bring up a Tailwind config just like you would do on the web. You create a global CSS, you add a Babel config and both a Metro config, and then you're off the races. Just import your global CSS and use it in your code. And that's what we're gonna do now. Okay, so after setting up your project with those like five steps, you can begin, you can use your global CSS, just import the Tailwind stuff, have the usual uh, Tailwind configuration in place, and then you can see already in the background the magic here, my iOS app running with live reload. I can change something here and of course it changes. And the cool thing is, of course, it also works on the web and I could also bring up an Android simulator. It would work exactly the same. So I had no problems at all setting up native wind with the current version and it just works really, really great. And you see all of this is just Tailwind. So if you're coming from the web, actually really like everything works. So let's say I wanna um, change my text here. Let's add text gray something. I could also do like text gray 200 and it is so fast, really. It just works without any problems. And you can also have like um, dark uh, mode support, pretty easy. So if I now change to dark mode, oh, we see my background should probably go to dark as well. So I can just go in here, dark background black, hit save and voila, we've implemented a dark mode for our app. And of course, same is true for the web, or I could also make specific adjustments for the web. So on this text element, I could now also say web text uh, dash red dash 500, and only the text on the web platform would be red. So this is pretty cool to have the a way uh, of setting up different stylings for different platforms without like a specific switch in here. But there are so many more things that are really like super cool about it. So you can just bring in pretty much any kind of CSS like this. 
this is pretty much copied over from Tailwind UI. More on that in a second. Um, and it's just like a cool button. So we see here the button on the web, the button works fine. And it has just this default button styling that you might have used uh, before. Couple of other things we should mention. So I said it before, there are now CSS variables. So you can go into your CSS file, casually paste in something like this, defining a CSS variable here. And then let's say for my background, uh, I wanna use that. So I can just go into my background for the dark mode where we previously specified like dark black. And let's use my galaxy's color. And we see it turns black. And by the way, here I can also toggle my system appearance. Then we would also have dark mode here. Besides that, you can of course also use the usual breakpoint stuff. So if I had this surrounding view here on the web, and I would just say uh, on bigger screens, I wanna use a row layout, then of course this should work without any problems. And you might think, oh, can I really use everything? Also maybe like animations? Yes, of course you can. Let's check out this one here. This one has also standard class. We use once again the CSS variable and we do have transition ease in out with a duration set. So now I got this cool box and, I can, and it just works so smooth. And by the way, on native, on iOS and Android, this will actually use the very popular reanimated library in the background, which gives you the best performance for your animations because it actually runs on the native thread. So although you're writing Tailwind, you get the best of the native performance. And you can do some really fancy stuff with that. I made this one here. This might be a bit annoying, but anyway, I will bring it in. Uh, let's put it in the right place. So this one has the bounce animation here. Isn't that cool? It's quite cool and it's so fluent and it of course works on all platforms. So nothing new you have to relearn. And finally, the last thing that might be cool to show is you can really use the latest stuff. So you can also have your own classes using apply. I use the animate bounce here and I can now just create a simple text element using Simon's class. And just like before, we might just have to do a little reload here. It probably helps if I don't use the same color for the text as the background. <laughs> now we do have it in here as well with our tiny bounce effect. So really you can do pretty much everything that you can do with Tailwind with native wind. You can check out the documentation here, of course, for all the different APIs that you can use. There's a lot more to like creating your own themes and colors and using variables or color themes. So just take a look at the native wind documentation and you're gonna find a lot of knowledge for creating epic applications. That also means at this point, you can use something like Tailwind UI and enjoy a bunch of these components. You can just go into a section, grab the React code. Yes, you have to transform this to views and text elements and not divs and headers and other elements, but most of the styling here should work pretty much out of the box. However, there are two things to this. First, I also recommend you check out Expo DOM components. I recently did a video about them and there's a different way using Expo to bring in complete pages into your application in an even easier way where you can actually reuse that. So I will link to that video in the end. The second way is to use something called native wind UI. Now, I do have an affiliate code. It is linked below this video because I truly believe that native wind UI might be probably on the same level as Tailwind UI at some point in the future for React Native. What is native wind UI? It is, let me quote this correctly, a multi-platform collection of reusable components, screens, and flows that treat native feel as the highest benchmark. You can copy and paste these items into your project. Sounds familiar? The idea comes from ShedCN and it is not too uh, different. There are a bunch of components. It is made by one of the creators from uh, Native Wind, so from Dan Stepanov. He was also on the podcast if you want to check out that episode in the past. It is not free, as you can see. You can use some components, but let's quickly take a look at how it works inside because there are tons of components here that we can use. And by now, there are even a couple of screens that you can use. So that part is also interesting. Let's take a look at this application here. I ran this on my device and it shows us some default components from native wind and you might think oh this really looks like ios but this is not ios this is the cool thing this is actually using native wind under the hood and the concept of bringing in those components into our application so here we're going to see all of these components brought into following pretty much what ShedCN is doing as well and now if you wanted to use something like the Whatever we saw before, the content welcome screen, you can just copy over this code here. 
I'll just copy this over and go to my, let's say I have this content page. I'll just paste this in here and let's see if this works. I already added the navigation to that page and <laughs> it just works and it looks so good. And you have it right in here. You can now tweak this exactly to your needs uh, however you need this project, but it is all just Tailwind CSS. And if you just want like a little, um, let's say the card element, this is the cool thing. So you go into whatever, we're gonna select the card or maybe let's use the uh, segmented control. That looks pretty cool. So then you find this command using the native wind UI CLI. I'll just bring this in. Let's see. We're gonna run this right here, live demo. Okay, install this at the segmented control. And in theory, this should add in our folder. Yes, I have uncommitted files. I don't really care about that. In our native Win UI component folder, it should in theory add a new file. So yeah, this also sometimes require other files. It overwrote them. Here's the new segmented control. And I should be able to simply use the code in here. Let's give this a try. And with that, we probably have on our details page, a new component. Now, sometimes you can of course run into issues because these components also under the hood require native components, uh, which are not found. And then you have to restart your server and run this again. This is also running a development build. All right, so after a quick rebuild, this of course works. Again, this is using native components under the hood in combination with Tailwind and native wind. So that's why I had to do a little refresh. Meanwhile, I also added a card component just because I found it interesting. And here we go, we got the card component. So definitely check out native wind UI if you're interested in a set of components that really look native but use Tailwind CSS under the hood. Again, I have an affiliate code linked below this video. You will get the best bang for your buck, especially because there's purchasing parity implemented right here. So no discount, but based on your country, you might get a discount. So check out nativewindui.com. All right, that's a lot to digest. I'd recommend you just give it a try and see how it feels. Some will love it, some will hate it, just like people hate or love Tailwind. But just like Tailwind mostly won on the web, Native Wind might pave the way for a completely new generation of React Native developers with web background. That's also what one of the creators, Mark Lawler, told me on the Rocket Ship podcast. Mark explained the limitations of the inbuilt stylesheet API in React Native and how Native Wind addresses these limitations by bringing CSS concepts to React Native. I'll link to the episode with him below this video. Go Go check it out and of course subscribe to the rocket ship podcast for more react native knowledge but what about you would you like to see a full course on native wind let me know in the comments and if you want more about easy transition from web to react native check out this video about expo dom components they might make your life even easier i'll catch you in the next one and until then happy coding simon